and uh, Russian uh, in our society. Basically, it comes because of misconception about what this visual experience is about. The question is about deities. Is 
Devatas refer to collective consciousness and you refer to individual consciousness. Is the difference clear? Okay. So we have the avatar purushas also. Rama, Krishna are these avatar purushas. Then we speak of deities Garuda, Rudra, Shesha, Vishnu, uh, Lakshmi. All these deities are different and higher and higher level of our consciousness. That's why you said, it is said, meditate on a deity at the heart center, lotus of the heart center. At the lotus of heart center, I meditate on my guru. At the lotus of his heart center, guru, I meditate on my Why? Like that, the idea of telling you meditate on the heart center is to indicate to you there are deeper and deeper level of inner consciousness. So, a human being can attain a deity consciousness not to the extent of the deity has, but to the extent of the human system allows him to. If you go to a Samudra ocean, somebody goes with a bucket full of water, bucket can carry one bucket of water, somebody goes with the one tumbler carrying that tumbler. To the extent of your system capability, you can experience the deity consciousness. That's called variation of the deity. Okay. The deity in deity in Sanatana Dharma, the deities have some hierarchy. Okay. So at the topmost level of the hierarchy, Narayana is there. From Narayana, Brahma. Narayana itself takes the form of Vishnu. Then Brahma has wife Shakti, uh, Saraswati, Shiva, Shakti, Vishnu, Lakshmi, like that. Depending on the nature of their life, Sattva Guna, Rajo Guna, Tamo Guna, Pradana, the deities come into picture. Now, if you understand the deities as higher and higher level of consciousness of human life, so you will understand the deities properly. So that's why in, one, uh, in your in Shastra, say, you have to understand the tattva of the deity. Deities are like tattva, principle. The principles are the universal consciousness takes the form of the presiding consciousness of the world for creation, sustenance and destruction. They are represented, universal consciousness as an ego. Okay, just like you have an ego, you have an ego. Similarly, universal consciousness as an ego and that's called Rudra, the universal ego. You have a memory, universal memory is called Shesha. You have an intellect. The universal intellect is called Garuda. Okay. Garuda Gamana Banta, Shesha Shayana Banta. Shesha means, Shesha means remaining. Shesha means in Sanskrit, what remains? What remains? Experiences. What remains is when the universe Whatever karma you do, a residual karma remains. The residual karma of the whole universe is called, together called Shesha. Your individual karma is there, and residual karma of the whole universe is called Shesha. Okay. You have an intellect. Universal intellect is called a form of Garuda. Okay. It is represented as a bird which is flying. Because a bird which is flying can see sharply this object down on the earth. Similarly, a purified intellect can see the subtlest object. Garuda Gamana Bhanta means what? Garuda, your intellect is purified by 
sadhana, by shastra. In that purified intellect, you experience Garuda Gamana, which is Vishnu. Shesha Shayana Mandha, Shesha is one who is sleeping on the karmic impressions of the universe. So for that, that experience of deity is what we are speaking about. Now, there is a hierarchy, right? At the top level, there is a Narayana, Vishnu, Vishnu Shiva. So this hierarchy is given to represent the tattvas of the universal, universal principles. Highest universal principles beyond time and space, that's called Narayana. Not in the domain of creation, beyond the domain of creation, Narayana. Then, for creation purpose, we take the form of Vishnu. Vishnu means Vishnu, Vishnu, Vashakkaro. The Vishnu is the one who is pervading whole of the universe. The creation has started. In the creation, just like you have individual, you have ego. The creation has an ego, it's called Buddha. Okay. And the children of Rudra represent the sub-principles who are derived from that. So, of the lowest principle, lowest principle, the Shiva son is Ganesha and Subramanian. Ganesha represents the earthly consciousness which is closest to the earth. Ganesha is Pratama Puja. He has to worship first of all the devatas. Devatas means deity consciousness, higher and higher consciousness. Okay. Ganesha also is deity for the intellect, buddhi. Right? So Ganesha is married or unmarried. There's a debate which has been going for billions of years. So what do you want to go class you fall into? <laughs> is married or unmarried? <laughs> he is a relation. He is a relation. <laughs> So Ganesha is, they say some people say he is not married, some Purana says he is married, he has a two wives called Siddhi and Buddhi. Okay. Okay. So this wife and husband concept in our Devadas you would understand. The husband represents the consciousness, wife represents the power of the consciousness. Okay. The masculine denotes the consciousness, the feminine denotes the power of consciousness. For example, the fire okay, is masculine. The burning power of fire is feminine. Brahmaji is the consciousness responsible for creation. Saraswati, intelligence which is required for creation is the Shakti. The masculine and the feminine. The consciousness, the power of consciousness. Okay. Consciousness and power. There is a Shiva and Shakti. Brahma, Saraswati, Vishnu, Lakshmi. Vishnu is the consciousness for sustaining the universe. Lakshmi is the Shakti, energy and power which is required to sustain the universe. Dana Lakshmi, Dana Lakshmi, all those things are required. Dana Lakshmi, without food you will die. Right. The power, <laughs> there is a consciousness and power of the consciousness. Power of the consciousness uses the material nature. So these are called masculine and feminine. So Ganesha represents the intellect. The intellect which is not evolved is not married. <laughs> it's single, evolved. <laughs> okay. The intellect which is flowered has Siddhi and Buddhi as wives. Ganesha is Vigna Karaka and Vigna Vinashaka. The intellect which is operating like this will create a lot of trouble for your life and other life lives also. <laughs> Intellect, which is operating properly, is in the Vinashika. You think, start working straight. Okay. Now, when I say Ganesha is not individual consciousness, universal consciousness is operating through you. So, Ganesha is Pratama Puja. Okay. Any business you want to do, 
Ganesh has to be worshipped. The only thing which can make things work straight is the clear intellect. Whether it's a medieval success in life or spiritual evolution, without intellect getting straightened up, becoming clear, how can you be successful whether it's a medieval venture or spiritual venture? That's why you have to do Ganesha Puja. Okay. People do Ganesha Puja, but intellect only, intellect is only bad because they do only Puja, they don't understand the significance of Puja. Anything in spirituality, any religion, without understanding the deeper meaning, if you do it, it is super, super, superficial. So, there are four ways of experiencing the deity. It is called Sadokya, Sabitya, Sadokya, and Sahitya. Sadokya means you experience the deity in that world. People are very, very have wrong understanding that they were Sarukya. A deity whom you experience in your loka is called Sarukya. What is your loka? Please tell me what loka you are in body culture. Okay. Your loka is your body. Your loka, your husband and wife and family. So in that yoga, if you experience, it's called Sālokya. Typically, it's called a vision. Then comes the Sāvipya. What is Sāvipya? Sāvipya means closeness. How can somebody be close to you? <clears throat> the real closeness is psychological closeness. She is my close friend, yeah. That means you are going away, sir. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so together, whenever you go to bathroom and toilet, also you go together. No, closeness is not that. You are close mentally. Psychological closeness is called Samibya. You become psychologically close to your deity. That's called Samibya. Not phys physically, is the lowest level. Right? Physically, I tell you. Physically, you may be working with a billionaire's company, but still you may be spending for thousands. Of <laughs> Physical closeness is not real closeness. It's a good to fear. Right? Psychological closeness is not become closer to the deity. Okay? Psychology. That means your mind also working like that deity. Sarupya means your mind has taken the form of the deity's mind. Sayujya means, that means your mind has taken the form of the deity's mind, means you can experience the world with the vision of the deity. Sayujya means you have become one with the deity. Sarukya, 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 Sayujya. These are the four. Levels of experience, right? Please explain that. Sarupya means, right? Sarupya. Sarupya means your mind has taken the form of the mind of the deity. That means, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example, okay? I'm just giving you an example one day so that. Sarupya means mixing with uh, same. Sarupya mixing with same. Sarupya means with one. You are no longer your identity is there. You are, you are become one with the deity. Okay. Now, I'll give you an example. Somebody is worshipping Rama as the avatar of Pusha, God, or Inka, Pusha, Vishnu. I am giving an example to understand, make you understand. Now, is Rama physically there now? <coughs> Rama was there in Ayodhya, maybe 10,000 years back, it's physically. So, somebody experiences Rama in your house, in your place. That's called a vision, a physical vision. Now, what are these physical visions dependent on? It depends on time, it depends on space, it will be momentary, and it will And you have, a, you have a concept, right? If you have a concept of Rama as something, mind will project that concept in front of you, right? So, these are the conditions. If the time is there, 
it can accommodate certain amount of time. There is a space is there. Then your concept also. Your concept of Rama is a Aryan. You will get an Aryan Rama. The concept of Rama is a Dravidan, you will get a Dravidan Rama. The, my, your mind plays a role in that concept. That's called Savok. Savok is not just that. Savok is not just vision. Savok is you start feeling the presence of the deity in your place. Okay, I'll give an example. The example. So the Prime Minister is there. Okay. So Prime Minister is there in Delhi. Now Prime Minister comes to Bangalore. So what happened to the streets? One street will be cleaned and some boards will put, painting will be done. Okay. Now Prime Minister has decided that I will sit in Bangalore only, I don't like Delhi. Delhi is a hot weather. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your place? <laughs> Should be kept clean and clean. So, deity appearing to your house or in your place momentarily is a vision. So, deity, you start feeling the presence of the deity in your life, then your life will change the way you live. That's a constant vision. Let's say tomorrow, Narayana decides to come and sit in your house. Forget Narayana, you will not come and sit in your house. One day, once an occasion, they come, it's welcome. Okay, you do something. Then they decide, oh, my, I like my daughter so much, I have come and sit in my house. And now your life. Your life will change. Understand? So the deity's vision momentarily is a welcome gesture. <laughs> if the deity vision becomes <laughs> Constant. Okay. Then what will happen to your life? Your life will get changed. The way you live, the way you work, the way you talk, it will change. Okay. Now the problem is there. What is the problem? Salokya is only a fraction of reality. Not even the full reality. Why is a fraction of reality? There is a time. There's a space, then we have mental concept. So where did you derive your mental concept from? Huh? You might have read movies, you might have read stories, you might have read the serials, you might have read seen the calendar, whatever is that. Your mental concept determines the deity. Should it so? Should it be so? So can you explain the deity free from mental conceptions? Then you have to move from Sarukya to Sarukya to Sarukya to Sarukya. So you experience a deity because you are born in such and such a family. If you are born in some other family, you will experience a deity in some other way. That deity will be coming with a stick, not with the rice flower. <laughs> okay. So our mental concepts and social conditioning affect what we visualize, which means our realization is not complete. It's a very partial relation, no doubt good to have, but not complete. Thank you. That's called Sarokya. The Sarokya vision becomes constant, then your life will change. If the life, no change has happened, that means it's not complete in itself. The constant vision. Then Samipya comes. Somebody, somebody, somebody experiences Rama. Now Samipya comes. What is Samipya? Samipya means closeness, psychological closeness. What is psychological closeness? Let us say you are psychologically close to your friend. Okay? She is my close friend here. She is staying in Delhi and Delhi. Not close means not physically close. Or she may be in America. So how do you say psychological closeness? Yes, it is the emotional frequency. Oh, yeah. See, make your phone come. I chose a child. That means so I also chose a sari. <laughs> well, I chose a sari with yellow border. Yeah, I also did that. <laughs> so, your mind starts thinking the same frequency. Okay. <laughs> your choice of thing, the work you do, you may not have the same circumstances, but still, you see so much of commonality in your life. That's called Sami 
Now please tell me, Sri Rama is your deity and you are close to Sri Rama. Then what is psychological closeness means to you? What will happen psychological closeness to you? I'll ask the question, right? Because all of you, I don't have to explain Sri Rama, Sri Krishna or uh, Shiva. So I'll give two examples. Shiva is psychologically close to you or Rama is psychologically close to you. What is the difference? What is the, if Rama, the way Rama thinks you are supposed to thinking, how will it happen to you in your life? That's psychological closeness. That's called Samitya. So how will it be? I will send to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> and do not want to marry them. Get married and go to college. So, Ramaha is Vikrava Dharma. Rama is the embodiment of Dharma. Okay? So, he is an ideal son. He is an ideal husband. Ideal friend. He is an ideal enemy. Okay? And he doesn't violate Dharma. So if you are psychologically close to Rama, what happens to your life? You will not become like him. You will not become physically like him. Our deeds, your actions. actions will be guided by dharma in every respect. That is psychological close to Rama. That is from Salokya to Samitya. You will become a replica, miniature represent. That is what is meant by Human beings are made in the image of God. He is the Bimba, I am Prati Bimba. I am the reflection. Have you become the reflection? Or you are illusion? Have you become the reflection of your deity? Hmm? Actions are proof. Yeah. Ultimately, your actions will translate into that. The deity may be at the universal level, but at the individual level, you become embodiment of dharma. If Shiva is your deity, what are the qualities of Shiva? Stillness. He is called Vairagi. Vairagi. No, 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 it's wrong. See, this Shiva, Shiva has a family. Okay? Parvati is there, and Ganesha is the leader, and Subramanya is there. Shiva is a highest yogi and he is a ghastha and he is a vairagi. See the concept, this all this, please understand, all these concepts are given to you because your mind starts thinking some drastically different things. Yogi means you have to go to Himalayas. Shiva goes to Himalayas but he is a family. Okay, yogi means running away from family. We have always got wrong concepts. You have a family, you are completely detached. And your highest yogi, that's Shiva. So qualities of yoga will appear in your life. Qualities of detachment will appear in your life. If yoga and detachment is not in your life, still you, still you can say you are Shivakta. Okay? I am such a bhakta of Hanuman. Fine, Baba. What qualities of Hanuman has reflected in your life? Is there a percentage of courage has come in your life? Is there a percentage of devotion has come in your life? Unless he has become Bimba and you become Prati Bimba, he has the origin and your reflection, how can you call your Bhakta of somebody? Even the percentage of the qualities of the deity have not come in your life, then what do what you call yourself as? So if you are somebody who is a devotee of Shiva, you can see the highest detachment, you can see the highest wisdom. Shiva is the embodiment of wisdom. Yoga, has it appeared in your life? No, 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 I meditated, I saw deity. You saw deity, it is called Sarukya. But has it become Sarukya? Samitya? Have you become closer to deity? The qualities of deity has come in your life? It is called Samitya. Okay. Then comes, Samitya means closeness. Sarukya means identity. Now, your mind becomes identical with the deity whom you are. Samitya is closeness, Sarupya is identity. So what happens if your mind has become identical, identified with Rama's mind? Please tell me. If your mind has become identical with Shiva's mind, what happens to you? 
Now you are no longer being individual. You are becoming a part of the universal. So now what happens? You will not be you are not confined to individual. Your qualities of will reflect on others in a double. You are no longer individual. The deity's qualities will reflect through you. You become the vikraha of that deity. Otherwise, what you are doing, you are worshipping vikraha, story vikraha. You become the living vikraha of that poor deity. You become the living replica of Rama. You are becoming living replica of Shiva. Not that you may be you dress. Okay? In terms of qualities, what Rama would have done in the situation will happen through you in that situation. Yes, God. Yeah. I'll come to that. <laughs> Basically, there is more, more less and less become individuals and more and more becomes universal. Others you are individual. Then comes the Sayuja. Sayuja means total oneness. Then there is no distinction between you and the deity. You have merged with the deity. The deity alone remains. You have become Vikrahava Dharma. You become the embodiment of Dharma. So in Sarupya, you, you have the experience of the deity in your life. So what experience Rama has when he has followed Dharma in his life, that becomes Sarupya. Sarupya means there is no distinction with you and the deity. There is no gap. Instead of you thinking the deity thinks through you, it has been identity. So these actually are four levels of experience with the deity. You have to, from a physical level, to a psychological level, to an intellectual level, to a spiritual level, the merger has, the experience has to happen. The experience at the spiritual level is called Darshana. We use the word darshan word very wrongly. When I go to temple, I say I had a darshan of the deity. That darshan of the deity is at the physical level. It's only a small fraction of the reality. The total reality can happen at the physical, psychological, intellectual, and spiritual level. That experience of darshan. So Ganesha is Muladhar. He is close to earth. Mulada is close to earth. earth Ganesha color is red because the frequency of vibration is close to earth. Okay. Second thing is Ganesha is Pratama Puja because he is the intellect. Okay. Ultimately, for any successful love, the intellect has to be known. Then Ganesha is called Gana Isha. Okay. What is Ganesha? Gana Isha? Lot of ganas, right? You see TV serial, you will understand. All dancing and singing songs and all, right? So that's not that gana. Gana is Indriya gana, sense organs. Okay? So, a Ganesha is one who is a master of sense organs. That is, your intellect has become so pure, it directs the sense organs. Otherwise, all the people are Ganadasa, they are slave of sense organs. Okay. So how do you say how do you say that how, how I am I saying something? Ganesha is the one who has become master of sense organs. That's why in Ganesha all sense organs are magnified. You look at Ganesha picture picture, idol. Every sense organ in Ganesha is magnified. Ears become big, eyes become small, which sharp, the teeth become big. Means the taste becomes the larger, thick skin, which is touch becomes thicker, elevated skin. Just to indicate to you that Ganesha means one who has become master of sense organs. So Ganesha you can experience for five levels actually. You do just Ganesha puja without understanding anything about Ganesha. That's puja. You have a vision of Ganesha, that's a physical level. You have a Samipya, psychological understanding of psychological experience of Ganesha is called Samipya. Your intellectual clarity about the way Ganesha thinks and you work with him, 
then you, your work gets, because your intellect becomes purified, that's called sarukya. Your intellect becomes so sharpened that you have a universal impact on life, it's called sahitya.
is called Shaktimal as awakening of this energy. Now, energy which mixes with universe energy will not stay like that. It will again come back to the individual level. The process goes up and down. But in the process, something happens. What happens in the process? You take a glass of water, put a blot of ink. Take a glass of water and put a ink in that. The glass has become, or the water has become blue. How you have to remove the blueness of the water? You want to remove the blueness of the water so that you can get a fresh water effect. How do you do that? So what you have to do is you have to pour more water into the glass, put it in a bucket and keep pouring more water, fresh water, so that after some time it will become free from the color. Similarly, <laughs> the individual energy and in our mind what is there has become polluted by the nature, material nature. Like a lot of ink has gone. So taking it to the universal level, taking it to the highest level of awareness and energy, coming back, every time you come back, a part of your ink block will go. It will become fresh. Do sufficiently, it will become fresh. This process is called Kundalini awakening. Your energy mixes with your energy and come back. So every time you mix some part of the energy, it's purified. This is what the Kundalini awakening means. A simple process. Any complicated questions? Okay. So I'll teach you two methods of Kundalini awakening, two processes of Kundalini awakening. Okay. One process is called Shakti Path, and others is called Yoga through yoga. So both process I teach you. Shakti Pati is, Shakti Pati is the energy transfer from the master to the disciple. That energy transfer is called Shakti Pati. Awakening energy of the disciple through the energy of the master is called Shakti Pati. Very simple and natural process, nothing complex. It. It's like lighting a lamp, another lamp, as simple as that. The another process is called through yoga. So the difference between Shaktipat and Yoga, what is that? In Yoga, no, Yoga, there is a Sadhaka who is involved, there is an ego involved. In Shaktipat, there is no ego, no recipient. In one method, there is an individual effort. It's called yoga. Individual effort is called yoga. The grace is called shakti. In grace, there is no individual effort. It's a busy. There are two processes. Any questions? Okay. So now I'll tell you the, what, why what happens here. At the top of your head, there is a, there's a bone. As a child, this bone was not closed, it is open, soft. Right? As the child becomes grown up, the soft bone closes and it becomes hard. Yeah. All of you know that, right? This portion. When the bone was soft, when there is no closure, when the skin was there, bone is not closed. The consciousness of the child, energy of the child, was mixing up with the universal energy very freely, more connected to God. Okay. So when that closure happened, there is actually a feeling of this connection, both at the energy level and psychology level. So this is the center through which you can re-experience that connection to 
the higher consciousness. That's why it's called Sahasrara. Sahasrara means thousands of petals. And these thousands of petals opening up, flowering is called Shesha. This spinal cord represents the tail of Shesha and this is the opening of Shesha. So what happens there, as your individual consciousness merges with universal consciousness, there is no visualization required, no imagination required, no thinking required, just simple merger. More and more you will acquire the qualities of the divine in your life and the transformation happens. That is the process of the first process for Shakti Bhagavan. Anybody has a doubt? Let's proceed. So, the process I did. You sit, you feel close. So, I like this. Or like this. So you can keep it in Chinmurta or you can keep your hands like this. When you do that, okay. first we will start with the couple of deep breath. Then we will chant couple of Omkara. Moving our energy from the base of the spine to the sasara, where you still can feel. Then I touch the top of your head, okay, and you can feel the energy moving at the top of your head. Just be aware of the energy moment at that level. Okay. Feel that energy <coughs> and be with an understanding that my individual energy has much with the universal energy. My individual consciousness is with the divine consciousness. When we put it in this thing, Shiva consciousness merges with the Jiva, con Jiva individual consciousness merges with the Shiva consciousness. That is actually what is called the Darshan, merger of the consciousness. So when your mind comes back, mind can get to it. Then again you have to remember your true nature and stay there. What is your true nature? Repeat it. Nan Nanem Budu Nanalla Ideha Mana Buddhi Nanalla Satidandharma Shivanandari Shivoham Shivoham When I say Shiva, it's not a person. It's about consciousness, auspicious consciousness. My nature is Chaitanya, Atma Surupa. I am of the nature of Atma, Shivoham. Okay. My nature is I'm Atma Surupi. Atma is Paramatma is Bimba and Pratibimba. My nature is also a pure consciousness. I am not body, I am not mind, I am not intellect, I am pure consciousness. My consciousness and energy is merging with the divine consciousness and energy at the center. Individual means the universal. That attitude. When the mind gets bombarded with thoughts, again you remember this and take your attention there. If the vibrations drop there, okay, the vibrations effect drops there, you pray to the divine to keep hand on the head. The master, the divine guru, 
touching me. Please understand in this process there is no individual effort. It's a pure surrender, this called Sharnamati. Surrender to the divine, surrender to the master. That energy will move upwardly. Okay. And as you spend that energy moving upward, that mental or mental pleasures, impurities will drop. Just like a glass of water mixing up uh, ink, ink blot, getting flushed with the water. Okay. Just like Sakya. So, step number one is with deep breathing. Number two is Omkar Kanji. And when you sit, your head should be not like this, not like this, slightly bent backwards. You should feel a pull here. Not, if you do like this, neck will be painful. Not like this. Some people fall into sleep. Meditation is not about sleeping. Meditation is full of awareness. Light. Okay, then energy will move. The spinal cord should be straight. Any questions? Let's proceed. Take five deep breath, deep abdominal breath. Close your eyes and sit
but our identity is not the body, not the mind. Our identity is Atma. That you realize only when the mind is silent. That's my question. So then, uh, so normally there is a fear. And when there is a fear, there is a desire. So fear is at Muladhara because I have to, I lose something. Fear is about losing. Desire is about gaining. Protection. Right? So can you please write down three major desires in your life? And write it, write it properly, write it frankly because I can, uh, if you are written, uh, not written, uh, you will not be fulfilled. <laughs> Three major desires in your life. Right now he has kept me in testing stage. So, 
we have five desires. Okay, let us take one by one. Let us take the first one. to meet. See, Darshan of Kriya, right? So, what? Why? 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 What? What? what if that happens, what happens to you? The question, right? What happens to you? So let's say it happens. No, no, it happens. Let's say, and the desires come true, then what happens to you? Then nothing. Then, 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 they say the conditions to all. The desire has come true. Then what happened to you? There's nothing more to want. Happy. You feel happy. Happy. You feel happy. Okay. Right. So the mind becomes peaceful. Correct. So happy, peaceful. And then you are saying, my children or something. You will feel lovely. So if these three things happen to you. Without anything happening in your life, then what happened to you? <laughs> if this is already there in your person, then what happened to you? <laughs> the self-realization means to realize that the peace, love, and happiness is already there in me. So no external event has to happen to happen to me. <laughs> Means the love, absolute peace, absolute bliss is already I am. So nothing else has to happen. Huh? How can it? There's nothing else that's required to happen. That's what we call self-realization. That's the path. Is what is being taught. Then what is the desire? The desire is always if this happens, I'll be happy. A conditions apply like what they do in the. Banking and uh, this thing, right? Postponing your happiness. Postponing your happiness. So the self-realization or Atma Pnana means this is my nature. Bliss, happiness, and peace. It's my nature. Finish. And anything happening externally doesn't matter to me. That doesn't mean that I don't take care of children, that doesn't mean I don't do puja and all. But my happiness is not conditional to it. Any questions? 
So that is called Swadish Dana Chitra. Let us now close the video. Process of uh, Atma Jyoti. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> There's no process. <laughs> so, 
take a couple of times deep breath. Then chant Omkara nine times. Tilt your hands slightly like this. Pray to God, pray to Guru to keep the hand on your head area. The moment you do that, the energy will start spreading there. Stay in the energy. If any thought comes, too many thoughts comes. Realize that I am not the body, my body, right? I am pure Chaitanya. Stay there. <laughs> so next class is about Manipur Chakra. I don't know when it will happen. March, uh, uh, you need to confirm the date with the guy. Say. March, if it may not happen, say maybe March. Because I may have to travel uh, on the office work. So guy will know the exact date. It may happen third week. Uh, okay. Then this is actually third class of this uh, series. Uh, if there are enough people who are there for first class, I start with another batch. If those who are any, anybody is interested, they can give them, uh, not from here, any of your friends or relatives are interested, they can give the name to Gayatri. Once about 15 people are there, I start another fresh batch for that uh, series. So this class is third, there are probably seven classes up to Sahasrara. Should I get the sweets? Thank you. 